Right, guys, so I did promise a comrade seconding video. Uh, obviously, this is in the lead up to the 2024 uprun, uh, but the information will probably be good for most of the route for any uprun in the future. Um, so, yeah, let's start, uh, first of all, with the start. So, um, dropping off your runner in Durban, uh, weather not too cold, although there is a cold snap likely to come through uh, next week, um, but... You know, compared to starting in Maritzburg, it really should be pretty mild. Most runners, I think, will be happy just wearing a long sleeve T-shirt or something like that. I don't expect that you uh, any runner would need gloves or anything like that. Um, but where to drop off? So it doesn't really matter which side of the start uh, a runner is dropped off. Um, the route is accessible from both sides. Um, but what is pretty crucial is how you get out of Durban. So my recommendation is it is slightly easier to be dropped off on the north side of the route. There are more roads sort of in and out uh, so that you can get nice and close to the start. Um, but if you do get dropped off on the south side or if you do drop your runner off on the south side, then what I recommend that you do is you head towards the Esplanade and then cross and get over onto the north side of the route via the Esplanade. Um, if you drop your run off on the north side, then it's obviously just easier because your route out of Durban, it's a much easier way to get out of Durban to head up the M19. So for a second, that really is a much easier way. You're going to have far less traffic jams and stuff like that getting out of Durban. Um, and basically, you're going to head north. Uh, if you don't know the area, just head towards Kings Park, where all the big sports stadia are and where Moses Mibidia Stadium is. Head towards Kings Park, find Umgani Road, and head out of Durban on Umgani Road. Uh, Umgani Road will take you past Macro. That will lead you uh, up to the intersection with the N2. Just stay on Umgani Road. That becomes the M19, and that is going to be your route out to the first port of call, which is going to be Pine Town. Let's have a look now at the slideshow, and we'll guide you through the rest of the route. Uh, there are three principles here. Um, trying to avoid most of the traffic, using roads that aren't obstructed and so that you don't have to do detours uh, because of road closures, and being able to find access points that are less likely to be closed by the police on the day when it gets very busy, and places that you can park legally and get out easily and move on to your next spot. So let's have a look at the slideshow. Right, so let's get on with the seconders guide. Um, so what I'm going to suggest, once you've dropped your runner at the start, is that you are going to stick to these three principles. First of all, you've got to find legal parking. Uh, the second thing is that we're on your way to Maritzburg, you've got to avoid closed roads and hectic traffic. Sometimes it is unavoidable to avoid hectic traffic, but uh, for large parts of it, you can... Uh, use alternative routes that most people won't know about. And then the third one is obviously to beat your runner to all of the locations. Um, in general, it's a good idea to try and have a few people on the road that are not going to move. So what I generally do is I put a call out through our sort of running network and quite a few paddling friends of mine and whatever, you know, being local, everybody goes and stands out on the road on Comrades Day. And I just put a call out to anybody who's going to be on the route, wherever they are going to be. And no matter, even if they're going to be a kilometer apart, I will give everybody something who's going to be on the side of the road. And then what I do then is with um, the places where I get, it's going to be my wife, um, where she will go are generally the places that are less frequented by big crowds uh, and therefore also less traffic. And that also means that she can get in and out. So the first place you're going to head for uh, once you have left the start area is Pine Town. So how do you get there? You're going to leave your runner at the start. Uh, you then get, you need to get to the north side of the route. So sort of from the general start area, that means that you are going to be heading sort of towards the northern beaches or basically towards the Kings Park area. From there, you're going to find your way onto Umgani Road, and you're going to head out of Durban on Umgani Road. 
That becomes the M19 as you pass under the M2. You then continue for quite a long way. It's probably about 13 or 14 kilometers uh, up a long hill heading for Pine Town. As you come into Pine Town, you'll go over a crest underneath a bridge and you'll come down to a major intersection with a, with a robot and the not used BRT system uh, goes across that intersection, which is the intersection with Bevis Road and Shepston Road. You keep straight, so staying on the M90, it's now called St. John's Avenue, and you're going to come in on the what's marked as blue. So on all of these slides, the route that you will drive is marked in blue, and I'm trying to put an arrowhead to show the direction that you are coming from. Um, and the Comrades route itself is marked in red, so that'll be the route that the runners are using. So you're going to come in over the crest there. You can see on the slide where Bevis Road is. Uh, and you are going to turn right into a road called Nisbet Road, and then you can park in the Checkers car park. It's a nice big open car park. Try and park up as close to the route as you can. Checkers will not be open by the time that your runners are coming through in the morning. It will be probably about 7.30ish, depending on how fast or slow your runner is. So it should take them uh, around about two hours, maybe just over, maybe just less uh, to get there, maybe maybe two and a half hours for a 12 hour runner, I'm not exactly sure. Um, but they're gonna have run approximately 20 kilometers to get there. Uh, so checkers won't be open. They don't, they aren't fussed about their car park. There's plenty of space to park. And then you just find your way to the route uh, close by there. Don't go to a part that's too crowded and to, uh, like sort of too many people deep. You will, you might have to just walk up and down a little bit to find a good place. The runners will actually run through the BRT underpass that goes underneath St. John's Avenue. So when you see them running in red there, they will actually run underneath the M19. Um, and, and that's a really good spot. It's, you know, you can find legal parking and because St. John's Avenue is there and it crosses the route, that is going to be your main way of getting across the route because you need to get to the, in order to get to Maritzburg, you need to get to the other side of the route. So that's Pine Town. Then to leave Pine Town, you can see it, it isn't quite the same size, but to leave Plantown, you then gonna cross, the runners are gonna be running underneath you and St. John's Avenue is open. So you will then continue in the direction in which you were driving. The M9, where you cross the M13, which is closed by the way, because the runners are heading for the M13, uh, a very few kilometers up the road. Um, but where you cross the M13, it will become the M7. Uh, and then you just keep going for a little bit and you'll see signs that tell you you can get onto the M3. You're going to loop round and then you're going to head for the toll road, uh, which will be pretty busy and it will take you a little while to get through, but they do know that Comrades Day is going to be busy and hopefully they should have all the gates open. And that is how you are going to head for Maritzburg. Uh, you're now on the correct side of the route and should have a reasonably free passage on the freeway heading for Maritzburg. The next point that you're gonna head for um, is gonna be the Comrades Wall and Arthur's Seat area where your runner will have run about, yeah, probably about 42 kilometers at the point where you will see them. So I've just got this point marked here, which is a little bit um, up the road from where you're going to meet the route. Uh, please, if I can offer you some advice, do not be tempted to go to Drummond. You can meet your runner one kilometer before they get there. It is a lot more convenient and a lot easier. You can, you'll be able to park much closer to the route. You'll be able to park legally uh, in, the, in the areas that I recommend. You will not have the cops trawling up and down because it's not that busy. And you'll be able to get in and get out much quicker and much easier and park much closer to the route. So I really strongly recommend that you do follow my advice here. So yeah, you're already on the N3. You've jumped on there in Pine Town and headed up towards Marisburg. As I said to you, the toll gate will be a little bit busy and will be a little bit jammed up. But apart from that, 
the traffic will be flowing. You're going to go over Key Ridge and then at Hammersdale is where you are going to turn off. There is a new construction area there. Um, so just be mindful and you'll have to have your eyes sharp if you're not familiar with it. But you're going to be turning off at Hammersdale. And from there, you're going to, so you'll, you'll loop back and you'll cross over the M3. Then when you're still in that construction area, you're going to turn right up a road called Meadway. Uh, you then wind around a little bit and you're going to head for, uh, you're going to turn left onto 1000 Hill Street. Uh, then there is quite a bit of winding on this route, but when you get to that point where the yellow arrow is, you're going to turn right into a road called Diker. And then you're going to, yeah, you're just going to follow it for quite a while and make sure that you stay on Diker Road. So it branches off a couple of times and a couple of other roads come off it and it wiggles and woggles for a little bit. Just use your Google Maps and follow yourself on Google Maps until you get to the point where the end of my blue line is. Uh, you can see the Comrades route is now within a very short distance. And then from there, you're gonna have two options. Um, so, the option number one is just to stay on Diker Road for a little bit and go till you meet the dead end. It will take you to within a very short distance of the route. You'll need to just climb up a little bank and it's a well-worn path. The locals use it. It's very well trodden. Uh, it's not difficult to get up at all. And it's just sort of a 10 or 15 meter little hop up onto the route. And that will take you up onto the comrades routes just before Comrades Wall, it's on the bend as you're approaching Comrades Wall. So that's marked uh, with a blue number one there uh, as option number one. The other option, if you don't want to do that, uh, and that one will be relatively quiet, there won't be that many cars there. You just uh, turn around and park so that you're facing out and not obstructing any driveways. Uh, you can see there are houses there. Um, and yeah, it's a relatively quiet spectator part of the route and you do have, there will be a table probably on that corner, uh, but you do have the whole of Comrades Wall on that straight piece of road where you can go and there's a lot of space where you can watch and spot your runner. Um, and it is flat actually. Your runner, by the way, they will, for 40 kilometers, they will pretty much have been running uphill constantly. Uh, so to see a lovely piece of flat road, they will be ecstatic. And especially if they can see, uh, you know, you waiting there, you know, to just spur them on and whatever, it'll really be a motivating factor because they really will be sick of running uphill. Um, but then if you don't want to do that little uh, sort of climb up the 10 or 15 meters of trail onto the road, you can turn left into Lynx Road and then right into Impala Ridge Road, which then also winds quite a bit, and that's marked as option number two. And Impala Ridge Road does go directly onto the route just below Comrades Wall, and that is your second option. Where that point meets the Comrades route, that literally is about one kilometer before they are going to get into Drummond, and it's on the last descent as they're dropping down towards Drummond. Uh, one thing, no matter which of these two areas you go to, one thing, just remind your runner to protect their legs and not to take too much impact on the downhill. So yeah, th that's the area that you're going to be in. So Comrades Wall, as I said to you, you can see there's the long straight. The road is just to the left of my picture there. Uh, and you can stand on this dirt. It's a, it's a good few hundred meters. Uh, you can stand anywhere along there and spot your runner. And then Arthur's seat is literally just around the corner where the runners will all be doffing their caps and dropping flowers uh, in honor of Arthur Newton and hoping that they will have good luck for the second part of the run. So yeah, if you do do that at Parler Ridge Road access, you could actually just walk a little bit up to the right and you'll see this landmark, um, which as runners are running, it's on the left-hand side, uh, sorry, on the right uh, left-hand side as runners are running is where the landmark is. And there is a little a piece of lawn uh, that you can situate yourselves or just anywhere on the side of the road, to be honest. Yeah, so that'll take your runner uh, sort of almost to halfway. You, you won't quite meet them at halfway, but you, you will be almost there. 
Uh, and one thing that I will have to say is from where you have seen your runner, you now do need to move pretty quickly uh, because the next spot is pretty close by. Your runner only has approximately eight Ks of running and walking. They do have to climb over in Tonga. Uh, and this next spot that you are going to be going to is a little bit busier and you may need to be pretty uh, tactical with finding parking and you might need to walk a little distance to get to the route. Uh, so it's gonna take you to the start of Harrison Flats. Uh, you're gonna see your runner when they have run approximately 52 kilometers. So you're gonna need to go back to the, basically almost all the way to the freeway, the way that you drove uh, to either Comrades Wall or um, out the seat. So go all the way back down to the bottom of Midway. And then where you get back down to where that sort of construction area is, you're going to need to uh, turn right. The road on here is marked as, the, as road number 385. And then you're going to head up towards Inchonga Railway Station, which is where the steam trains are located. Um, it becomes a Thousand Hill Street, yes, another Thousand Hill Street. Uh, and head sort of gently up the hill and roughly parallel to the freeway and then meets the route a little bit further up. As I said, it does get pretty busy. Uh, there is sort of people just make a plan and they just park sort of anywhere where they can find parking. Um, and that's why my blue line sort of ends a little bit short of where the road meets the route. I wouldn't go all the way up. It does get pretty busy. busy. And you can get parked in if you're not careful. I would definitely turn around and park so that you're facing out. And if you do go into any of the grass areas next to the road, make sure that you park in an area where you can't get parked in. It will be quite a lot busier here. But as I say, the two points are really easy to access from, from almost like the same access. So it does make it advisable. And your runner will have run a very long way by the time they get here and it will be starting to get very tough. So it's really helpful for a runner uh, to see the seconds in this area. Um, just a note on this area, you can see right at the top of the screen there is Itembeni Special School, which is a, a really sort of a special place for runners to run through. Uh, all the kids from the school come out onto the road and uh, stick their hands out to get a high five uh, and it is one of the charities that has benefited by the race so you could even consider when you get to the route you could even consider just walking a few hundred meters around the corner and just going and uh, watching that it is quite a sight to behold uh, you know kids in wheelchairs and uh, all sorts of disabilities sort of really they are very enthusiastic and they really lift the runners a lot um, yeah and that is the start of Harrison Flats, which by the way isn't flat, and no matter which way you run it, you've got a hill to climb to the top. Uh, but you're going to see them if you see them at the junction there where they where they join onto the road that you've come up. They will have about a kilometer and a half to go before they get to the top of Harrison Flats, which is the point that I marked on the map on the previous slide. So that at that point there that you can see on the screen, they will have run around about 52 kilometers. Uh, from there, you're going to have to head back to the Hammersdale turnoff to get back onto the freeway. And when you head back onto the freeway at that point, uh, from, from that point on, the freeway does get relatively busy and can be very slow going. Um, so just be patient. I promise you it will, you know, I, I have run eight comrades, um, but I promise you, I've seconded many more comrades than what I have run. I have been involved in comrades my whole life. I've got many family members and friends uh, who've run the comrades and I've seconded many, many of them. Um, so yeah, if the freeway does start to get a bit jammed up, don't worry, you will, on average, you will be moving faster than your runner. Uh, just make sure that at the start of the day, you've got a nice full tank of gas uh, to last the whole day. Uh, the next point that you're going to head for is not camper down, but you are going to use the camper down turn off. Um, my advice is to avoid areas like camper down and Cater Ridge. They tend to get very, very clogged up with spectators and the parking is very difficult. The cops even sometimes shut the turn offs off uh, because it just gets too clogged up with cars and they 
they just can't manage the number of people. Even if they have closed the road, just tell them that you are not going to camp down and they should let you turn off to the left and head up parallel to the freeway, even if the off ramp is closed. Uh, but really, stay away from Camperdown, stay away from Cater Ridge. Uh, you might find it very difficult to find parking if you're trying to get to those areas. Those are the types of areas that you want to use seconds that are going to be staying there for the whole day. Uh, that can get there early, find parking, and watch every runner through until the last of the 12-hour runners are through um, and have their day in one spot. Where you are heading for is Amlast Road. So when you take that camper down turn off, turn left. And then you're going to head parallel to the freeway. Um, you're then going to get to a point where you meet the R6103, and then you're going to turn right. You can see the R6103 is marked there. Um, and you're going to head towards Spanamerva's garage, which is the Shell garage. Now, when you get, and you can see how the route sort of joins onto the R603 for a very short period there. Uh, the, uh, yeah, and th that is in fact the highest point in the race. Your runner will have run a flipping long way by now. Um, approximately 65 kilometers run and about 19 kilometers to go at this point. So they will be very tired. They will be, have had a long day. If it's hot, they will be very hot and bothered. So if you've got any ice, try and keep it cold um, and, you know, start dishing it out at this point. Um, it is the highest point in the race. Remind your runner of that. They will be welcoming any sort of downhills that are coming their way after having done as much climbing as we have done by this point. Um, and they will think that everybody's been lying to them that there are downhills so far, but they, they are going to experience some downhills from here to the finish. Um, and it's a very important point to refuel because whatever food they can get in at this point, uh, it is a long enough distance away from the, from the finish that they can actually make use of any fuel that they can get on board at this point. So it is a very important sort of fueling point in the race. But as a second from here, it's a bit debatable as to how you're going to get out of here. Um, with things the way that they used to be, the right thing to do was to park facing so that you could head back towards Camperdown. Because you, you, in previous years, you have had to go back towards Camperdown uh, in order to then head towards Maritzburg on a very slow moving freeway. Uh, but this year, things may change. So there's the point marked on the route where they'll be. So this is my 2017 data, 68 kilometers run. Um, yeah, just, just be aware that from this point, traffic is going to be very slow and you really have to hurry to the finish. Um, so this is the 2024 route deviation. The green arrows mark the old route that we have always run in the past. The red line marks the new route. So the runners are going to cross over the new flyover and run on what is actually the wrong side of the they actually get, We're actually going to run on the freeway for a short distance. It's closed at the moment. And then we're going to meet up with the normal route uh, at Angel's Corner, which is sort of a kilometer up from here. But you, as a second, are going to be coming up to this point here. And the road actually might be open. So you've got two options. Uh, if the road is open and you can get through here, you, you, get, you might have two, well, there are going to be three options. So the first option is to do what we've always had to do and head back towards Camperdown and then head on the head back uh, to Maritzburg on the freeway, which it is very slow, but I have never failed to beat a runner. And the last time I seconded an uprun was in 2019. There are, however, more roadworks than there were in 2019. So I'm not sure whether the freeway is going to be a good idea. We'll just have to wait and see on the day. Your second option is to head, there might be a way that you can head onto the freeway, back onto the entry at Omlas Road. You can see the roads, the map on the, on the screen here. There might be a way that you can get onto the freeway at Omlas Road. I don't see any reason why they need to close the road. The runners are not even going to go close. 
uh, to that freeway access. So that might be an option and it will save a bit of time in some very slow moving traffic. Um, and that is an option. Your other option, so here it's all written, right? So the, here's the, the, the first paragraph is the heading back towards the Camperdown Tunnel. The second sort of paragraph is, um, oh, sorry, the, then the other option is uh, to head towards Thornville Junction on the R56. So if I just go back one slide there, that means turning left and heading off to the left on the map on that road. That road will then take you towards Thornville Junction. Then when you get to Thornville Junction, you will turn right and head down what is called Fox Hill. Um, I'm not too sure what roads are going to be open. You're just going to have to check what the, the road closures say. If, if sort of the normal road closures apply, you will have to head back, back towards Camperdown and head to Marisburg on the M3. Um, yeah, just, just play it by ear. That Fox Hill or that, that sort of Thornville Junction and then Fox Hill option, not many people are going to know about that if it is available you will definitely be quicker getting to Maritzburg than people on the freeway. Uh, you just, it is going to be a little bit longer and a little bit more complicated once you are in Maritzburg. If you're on the N3 heading into Maritzburg, stay on the freeway until you get to the Ortman Road turnoff. Do not follow all the other traffic that leaves the freeway. Stay on until you get to Ortman Road and then work your way to the finish from the Ortman Road turnoff. Trust me, you will see everybody going off at places like New England Road and trying to hit to the finish because as the crow flies, that is very close, but they're going to battle to find parking. They're going to park miles away and they're going to be blocked by the, the access is going to be blocked by the route and their parking options are going to be limited by the fact that the route crosses that access uh, road. So go around Ortman Road. It'll bring you into the finish from the back. You're going to have far more options to park. And it's a much better idea. And then when you're getting out, you're also going to be able to get out quicker. If you're coming down Fox Hill, um, that's going to bring you onto Alexander Road extension. My recommendation is to turn left into Camp Strift Road, which will take you towards Macro. Then you're going to go down and over the Doozy River and then to turn right into Moses Mabida. And then you're going to also, you're going to be coming towards the finish from the other side of the finish so that so that your your access route out is much easier um and that it will be you're going to be able to park much closer to the finish there's much more you've got much more options available to you in terms of parking and your access route out is much quicker uh you will when you if you're making this journey i promise you there are times that the runners are you're going to be able to visibly see the runners are running faster than you at certain times but as you get closer to maritzburg in my experience the freeway does open out and you do start to move quicker in 2019 when i was seconding my wife and a friend of ours i was sitting in the car on the freeway hardly moving at all in bumper to bumper traffic and had resigned myself to the fact that i wasn't going to make it and had let other people know that were there that I wasn't going to be there, but the freeway did open out and I did get there ahead of them. Um, but there are more roadworks on the freeway than there have been in the past. So yeah, that if you can get there, that Fox Hill option might be a good option to try and get to the finish. Remember that your runner is probably gonna be doing a lot of what I'm doing in the picture there, walking. So they're not gonna be moving very quickly uh, although there is quite a lot of downhill running, but yeah, you're, you're, I promise you, your run is not going to be blitz for now. Then when you get to the finish, just be aware of the new route in. So on the right, I've got the map of the new route in. So you can see why, if you're coming in on the N3 and you take the New England Road turn off, you can see why your parking options are going to be limited and perhaps having to park quite a long way away. Um, uh, because you're going to be blocked off by the, the, the runner's route uh, sort of blocking New England Road. Where you where I recommend that you try and get to is this sort of area here where the yellow arrow is. So to get there, you're going to need to, as I said, you're going to need to come from the other side and try and, try and sort of park in that sort of area there. Uh, there is a large uh, grass and there, there are quite a few options that are relatively close by to the finish in terms of um, parking options. 
So just have a good look at the maps and try and plan a route so that you've got a, a few different options and that so you don't have to park too far away. Then at the end of the race, depending on the weather and the time of day that your, fin that your runner is finishing, bring an old tracksuit top or something. Your runner is going to smell wonderful. So don't bring something new, but it just, just something warm. Um, a long sleeve t-shirt might even be good enough. Try and bring something that they wouldn't have been drinking all day because their palate is going to be pretty sick of things like Coke. Um, maybe something to eat. They won't have eaten much during the day. But having said that, don't be surprised if they refuse anything solid to eat. I know when I'm finished running, I really just don't feel like eating. Then I, I recommend that you keep your runner on their feet if possible. Uh, because comrades is not done they still have one kilometer to go and that is what will approximately i'm just estimating here be about a one kilometer walk to the car um if you get much closer than that then you really can rate yourself as a pro second uh and if you have done the whole day and manned the household early in the mornings and got all the children ready to go to school while your runner has been out for the last three months pounding pavements, then you also deserve a medal. And yeah, hopefully if you follow these instructions, then your day hasn't been too stressful. As I say, I've learned through experience that you, you really can't do sort of any more than about three or four points. And these three, these are points that I've picked are based on accessibility, uh, sort of, they are points that not so many people know about. So you tend to be able to park a little bit closer to the route um, and not have as many issues with the cops closing the road and accessibility and parking and stuff like that. So hopefully your day wouldn't have been too stressful and you can have enjoyed it. Okay, so hopefully that's uh, a help to some of you who might not know the area so well. Um, the, the spots that I have learned about through experience, uh, obviously I am a local, I have lived uh, in the area my whole life. Um, I have also seconded comrades on a mountain bike uh, quite a few times, uh, which is obviously, you know, you can really second the whole route that way. And a lot of the points I first figured out uh, on the mountain bike. Um, and then, yeah, using a vehicle to get there. Uh, those, are, those are the places where you can get in and out and get to the finish before your runner. So you really do deserve a medal if that's the job that you are doing on Comrades Day. And hopefully you can get your runner home uh, without too much hassle after all of that. So good luck. Enjoy it. And uh, by the way, um, if you see me on the road, I'll be the only runner that is, we uh, I work at a school, in case you hadn't didn't know. So there we go, behind me. Um, I am a chiropractor by profession, but I also am a teacher. Um, and I'm the, uh, we have a running club here where I work. I work at uh, DHS and I'm the only runner. Um, you know, we have 25 members, uh, 23 of which are schoolboys. Uh, but I'm the only one who'll be looking like a schoolboy with a blue vest and a gold stripe across my chest running comrades. Uh, so it makes me really easy, easy to spot because nobody else is going to be wearing what I am. So I'll see you out on the road and good luck. Enjoy it. Uh, whether you're on the side, seconding or a runner, uh, I hope to see you on Comrades Day. Good luck. Cheers.